many mountainous countries, it's of course a common sight to see the rushing waters harnessed to generate electric power. Great undertakings constructed by experienced engineers. In this Austrian village, however, the peasants have their own method of using the mountain torrent. They use it to drive a butter churn. The cream is poured in. The sluice is closed and the churn is turned. It's the simplest and for them the cheapest form of power available. When the churning's finished, the same motive power runs a lift to the log store at the top of the house. Heath Robinsonian, perhaps, but it works. While we're on the subject of water, Eastern Slovakia has quite a lot of it at Helenje, where Central Europe's only geyser spouts its way over a hundred feet up into the air. It's, uh, that is the geysers, its nearest neighbor is nearly a thousand miles away. So Helenje is proud of being exclusive. Another thousand miles eastward, on one of Russia's collective tobacco plantations, they're using new sprinklers to water the plants. Soil and atmospheric conditions are important factors in the cultivation of tobacco, and a drought would seriously affect the crop. Right along the rows, these sprinklers run as far as the eye can see. And that brings us to a new camera eye that can see and film underwater. We're at Balaclava in the Crimea, scene of the famous battle. But where guns fired then, only cameras shoot now. To take underwater pictures has up till now usually meant specially constructed glass-sided tanks. This camera is itself protected from water and films can be taken as easily below as above the surface. The only difference is that the cameraman must be a diver and fond of water as well but such folk are rare among the noble brethren of the lens and shutter. <laughs> 